G'day. Well, let's uh, have a look at another tutorial on how to create the uh, roof geometry that you see on screen. Uh, this looks like a rather complex roof shape, but in fact is quite simple. And uh, the tutorial will be about using the dormer function to create uh, this complex roof. Now, as we know, a complex roof is usually constructed as a series of simple roof shapes. And uh, that's what this one is, and you will see in a moment. So to, to make a start, and we'll clear the screen so you can see where we're going. Uh, construct roof, and we're going to use the digitize function and paste from a clipboard. Now, this image was um, picked up from using the Windows clipboard function from a PDF document from an architect. And this is the, uh, the, the, the design of the roof as supplied by the architect. And uh, we're going to digitize straight over the top of that. Now, if you have uh, real dimensions, um, that's going to be a lot easier than uh, digitizing. Although, uh, I have to say, digitizing this job using these features you will see is very, very simple. Uh, it will then simply be a matter of rescaling the model once we're completed to make it full size. Okay, let's uh, start off. The, uh, the first stage is to construct uh, this gable roof here. So I'm going to digitize that. And we'll start off at this corner here and across to this corner here and up to that corner there. And from there, I simply uh, right button and close square. And uh, I'm not going to touch the scaling at this stage. Uh, let's make this a tin roof. Um, uh, pitch, uh, the architect's plan says 45 degrees, so we'll do 45. And we're doing the perimeter, so the overhang will be zero. And uh, everything else, that's near enough for this uh, the, the purpose of this job. So hit OK. Now we want a gable at each end, so a gable end up there and a gable end down there. And we hit continue, and that part of the roof is built. Well, that was simple. Um, we won't save it at this stage. The next part is to now use the modify roof function um, and put a dormer on here. So we're going to put a dormer, and notice that the eave lines are shown because the software knows that a dormer must be installed relative to an eave. So I'm going to put the first dormer based on that eave line starting at the top end. And the dialog box is then displayed showing all the functions for placing a dormer on the roof. Now you might think, well, that's not a dormer, that's just another part of the roof. Indeed it is. But once the software creates it, it doesn't care whether you call it a dormer or whatever. So um, we have functions in the software for measuring things because I don't know the size of that. Um, the thing I want to know, first of all, well, it will be the same pitch as the rest of the roof. We know that because the valley line is 45 to the corner. Um, the distance along the eave, well this button here, this little button, we can measure the distance from the end to the centre of the ridge of the dormer. There. And that tells me that it's 3300. Look, I'm going to round that up to say 3400. That's near enough for these purposes. Set back from the eave, well that will be zero. And the width of it, well we don't quite know. So let's measure... Uh, the, the the width, well actually the width will be twice the distance across, so let's make, so from there to there is halfway, we'll, we'll draw the dorm with a full width, so we'll make that 6800, and this is the bit that makes it interesting, what's the gable overhang, well it'll be the length of that ridge uh, from relative to the eave, so we'll measure that, so we'll measure from the eave out to the end of the gable, about there, 6600, yeah, we'll just make that 6600. Preview that to see how it looks. Wow, it's almost spot on. Perfect. So if we like what we see, we hit insert and continue. And the um, continue allows us to draw the next dormer. Now this one, I'm assuming, will be essentially the same, except the, the, the length will be 200 mil less because, notice it's about here, I'm guessing that's about 200. Now, if you have real measurements, well, obviously, you will use those real measurements. Um, to get the same geometry, that is to say where the valley hits the ridge exactly the same as the previous one, well, then I'll have to use the same width, and we will. Um, the distance along the eave will be different, however. It will be 3,400 plus this little length here. So I'm going to measure that. I'm going to measure it from here to the ridge. Uh, 4100, yeah, let's go 4100. In fact, four meters. Let's preview that and see what we get. Hmm, maybe 4100 was correct. Whoops. And preview that. 
Wow, that looks almost spot on. Notice we're 200 mils back from the end and we're 4100 up from the end. Perfect. So if we like what we see, and you'll see that it sort of appears in a shadow form. Well, that's because we're still constructing it. The dormer doesn't actually get installed until we hit insert. So I'll hit insert, and now the dormer is in. Right, well, now that that's uh, got those uh, couple of dormers in, we can continue to put dormers here. And since we've got the function up, we might as well keep going. Um, so, uh, but before I do all that, adding dormers complicates the geometry. So what I'd rather do, cancel out of there. I want to get this inside bit here sorted out before I start complicating it with adding these other dormers. So th what I want to do is uh, figure out what happens with this mess in here. If I look at that in isometric and spin that around a little bit here, you'll see you've got a whole bunch of roof planes intersecting. So we go over here to the function modify roof more, intersect planes, and we want to intersect all planes. The software figures out where everything intersects and removes the redundant material. Now that's pretty cool. And if we want to see what exactly what's going on, we can go back to our uh, construct roof menu and we can actually hide the image for a minute and just see, wow, that looks about right, doesn't it? Great job. Show the image again and continue digitizing. So now that I've done that intersect planes, it's always wise to do rather complex calculations like that before you start messing with the rest. Now that I've done that, I think I can go ahead and put um, some more dormers in. So we go to modify roof dormer. I want a dormer now um, measuring from uh, this end. And uh, the pitch will be the same as the rest of the roof because that valley is parallel to that. So that will make that the same pitch. Even if 45 degrees is the wrong pitch, it will be all the same pitch. Now, um, First thing we want to know is distance along the eave. I want to know distance from there to the center of the ridge. And yeah, let's make that 43. Oops. And uh, setback will be zero. The width of it, we'll measure that. The width will be from the end of that valley to the end of that valley. And 20, let's make it 2700. And the gable overhang will be zero. And we preview that and beautiful. Hit insert and it goes in. Hit continue. Let's do the other one on the other side and uh, preview that one perfect insert and it goes in continue now we want to do more dormers we want to do these two fellows here so we'll let's pick on this end and we're going to figure out the distance from the start so distance along the eave measure from there to the ridge about there uh, 30 uh, let's make that 3700 also uh, the width of it, we'll measure the width of it from the end of that valley to the end of that valley. Uh, 3,800, I reckon 3,800 is a good number. And preview that, beautiful, insert, job's right. Now we continue and do the other one, but the distance along the eave is different. So we're going to start at that end, measure from this end of this eave. So from there to the centre line of the ridge, 3 metres I reckon. Preview that. Pretty good. Insert and we're done. The only thing left to do now is this area in here is going to be a flat roof. So we wish to cut that out. So we use the cutout function. Cut out, modify roof. We're going to digitize the cutout. We're going to cut out through the visible planes and we're going to delete the pieces. We hit OK. Because I'm digitizing, I'm just going to start out here somewhere. Go into that corner about there and to there and close square and yes cut out beautiful so we then turn our image off and there's our roof so a couple of minutes work now if you were using real measurements uh, you might use uh, track outline instead of digitize outline if you have access to an image as i did um, it came to me as a PDF document, so I simply uh, clip the PDF using the snipping tool or uh, the Acrobat uh, has a snipping function. Um, get it into the Windows clipboard and then paste it to the workspace. Uh, replay this video and uh, see where that comes from. And, um, and in the event uh, uh, you create the geometry, if um, we show our lengths and any of those lengths were uh, incorrect, we can then uh, rescale the image. Uh, so rescale the model to match the actual measurements that we um, have on our plan. So uh, 
quick and dirty, uh, very, very accurate, and um, in this case, only as accurate as the image, but um, a great way to create that geometry. So whether you digitize or whether you um, use track outline, uh, the process for creating that geometry will be precisely the same. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, look out for the next one. And remember, a complex roof is just a series of simple roofs. Have a great day and we'll look out for the next one. Bye for now.